Well, coaches and players alike, you know, have to address that. It is a gigantic issue because um, I think for the hours our kids are spending in the game, which means them running from tournament to tournament, from game to game, covering a gigantic geographical area, parents spending loads of money, uh, putting a lot of resources behind these kids. Um, it's not always adding up, and at the same time, they're getting some of them are getting burned out. Um, I think on the boys' side, obviously, the academy has been a very good thing, the U.S. Soccer Academy, because it's basically um, put restrictions on, on on those programs that are within the academy in terms of what they can do and what they cannot do, and and they've planned out the calendar for the kids for the right amount of soccer, the right amount of training. Um, so I think they've kind of artificially taken care of what should have been happening, you know, by itself prior to the academy. Um, on the girls' side, you know, what at this moment we need is a situation where players will go back home and really, uh, you know, assess. And I know I personally, when I talk with our national team players, I try to point this fact out that they need to assess how much soccer they're playing because, again, if they are playing club ball, state ODP, regional ODP, um, national team, in many cases their teams are doing multiple leagues, multiple tournaments. Um, they are playing way too many games over the course of the year and not even having time nor energy to do what they really need, which is to, to do the kind of stuff we, I just talked about in terms of improving technique by having a day off where they can get out on a field and, and just strike the ball a couple hundred times and become a, a tremendously more technical player. Our kids, unfortunately, are too exhausted to even have free days to get out and improve their technique. So at the end of the day, we're probably playing in total hundreds of more hours of soccer than some of our counterparts in other parts of the world. But, you know, we're technically in some respects behind some of the super technical teams, you know, and, and so we're not getting a whole lot of bang for the buck and, and time that we're, our kids are in this game. And, and that's a big, big issue which needs to be addressed back home. You know, we talk and talk amongst ourselves, and it's not just me preaching, uh, but there's a back and forth, you know, about our goals, our philosophy. And what I've asked them to do is, you know, every time they step on the field, be the ultimate pro. And whether we're doing the simplest of exercises, or we're playing games, um, or we're playing keep away or juggling, that they try to really be the, the, the most excellent player they can be for, from the moment they step on the field to the end of the sessions. And that can only help them in terms of being sharp. Um, we've tried to give them a, a broad array of competition back home and leading to a World Cup. We played against uh, not only the, their peers, like girls teams, we played against high level boys teams, women's teams from the W League, men's groups. So we've tried to really expose them to a vast array of um, levels and so they can really gain appreciation for what higher level soccer looks like and, and, and I think aspire based on what they see on the field to get a lot better knowing that there is so much room for improvement when they get in some of these contexts. And then being here at the World Cup I think in itself is an inspiration for the kids to want to get better because they've seen with their own eyes that, that there, there's great soccer going on all around the world and so competitive in this context and I, I think that will be an inspiration for a lot of our kids when they get back home to continue to work hard and move in, in the right direction when they get back home and, and realize the importance of what we're doing. Amongst the two personality traits that I think are pretty important when you watch players is people who like to compete, who are unhappy when things don't go their way, way and, and, and are not getting results, people who want to win and do whatever it takes to win. So uh, a gigantic attribute of a player here is that they're super competitive. Um, the other part is we need individuals who have really, really positive personalities, um, who when the going gets tough, don't just um, dig a hole for themselves or, or others, but remain really positive and try to support each other. So as I pick this team, you know, I've looked really for those two traits you know, competitiveness and a strong and positive personality. Those are probably the two most important traits I've looked for in the kids that I've brought into this equation. 
I think, you know, soccer has got to be fun. All these kids started playing soccer and other sports at young, as young kids because it was fun to play, to play games, to play with toys. And soccer is an extension of that. It's a sport and it should be fun. And I think the number one, one of the big issues for, for me as a coach and all the coaches um, is that the sport should be fun. And every day you step on a field, um, I think it's incumbent upon the coach to create an environment that's fun, competitive, um, so that those two hours that you spend in training, for instance, um, should be the very best and fun two hours for that kid that they spend all day, you know. Um, certainly much more fun than being in the classroom all day. Um, and if that's the case, and they're really loving their experience on the field because it's a lot of fun and it's competitive, chances are they're gonna keep getting better and you're gonna have a lot of positive chemistry if you're able to, to create that kind of environment and it'll build on itself and, and I think over a period of time, um, I think there's no chance but they're gonna all improve. On the other hand, if you treat them like they're soldiers or um, robots and just pound away and try to drill things into their head, um, or maybe it's not the right thing, then there's a good chance that some of those kids um, will get burned out, will not like it. And if a kid ends up going or feeling like it's a chore to get through a training session, then there's absolutely no chance they're gonna get better. And so for me, I think, you know, the, the big issue, even with our national team here, is to make sure that we're dealing with all the soccer issues, but doing it in a fun, competitive way. So they, you really look forward to you know, coming out to each one of our sessions and know that that's going to be the best part of their 24 hours each, each and every day when we're together. Absolutely. I, I think, again, it starts with my picture of what good soccer is and with me trying to pick players who can fit into the roles. But then when we get onto the field, you know, sometimes the players are a little bit different than what you thought. And again, our style, you know, will change accordingly and, and we will try to play to everybody's strength. At the end of the day, you know, you stand the best chance of winning and, and playing great soccer if every individual you have um, is able to bring out their strength, personal strengths as a soccer player. And, and again, they're very different. Some of them are gonna be, you know, physical attributes like speed. Some of them are gonna be great in terms of having great vision and that needs to come out some of them are great 1v1 markers and, and that's got to be a big part of the game so at the end of the day you know you cater to all the individual strengths you have and and you end up not being quite on in line with your personal picture uh but somewhere you know close to that 